couple of things to you. Do not get off track. Stay on track. Another thing, um, one of the big research pieces that I worry about every single day, and it actually started, I'm this old, but in 1983, we had a big battle in California. And we had, uh, at that time, many people in the state that did not want uh, community colleges to offer any remediation courses. And we had hundreds and hundreds of underprepared students like we do today. And we fought that off. We had a huge fight in the state. In 83, it took a long time. They backed off. They, you know, the state people kept the budget intact for remedial programs. We showed them that if the students didn't get remediated wherever they came from, they weren't going to graduate. They weren't going to be able to, you know, give their talent to the state, and this was going to be a lost opportunity for the state. And after that, a, a report was written called Promises to Keep. And that report had a sentence in it from a student that I knew. And she said, what made the difference in my life was somebody who believed in me. And I don't know about you, but that sentence has sort of resonated with me for almost, well, I guess almost 30 years. Because it really is the people who believe in you that propel you to do all the things that you've done and all the things that you're going to do in the future. So depend on other people and take advantage of other people. But the other thing I hope you'll do is take people with you. You know, you are really at a great point in your life. You've actually achieved a tremendous amount. We have, you know, our generation, we have 93 million adults in this country. Take out the kids. Take out, take out everybody under 25. And we have 93, and we only have more than a little more, 310 million people in the country. So almost 40% of adults are low-skilled, do not have the literacy. When I was in Warren, Michigan, you know, people were getting laid off from the automotive factory, the Ford factory, et cetera. They could not transfer because they didn't have the skills for robotics. And that company was changing out to robotics. And they weren't going to manufacture cars on an assembly line anymore. They were becoming very high-tech. And those people could not go back to school and start at step one in literacy, in reading, in writing, in mathematics. And so you all, you know, you're in the community college, you're already, you know, whether you're at Miami-Dade or, or, you know, the different colleges, Palm Beach, I think is one of them represented here today, um, whatever college you're from, community college, you already have enrolled in college, you're already, many of you are ready to graduate, move on, transfer to a university and continue on. And you've got a civic mission. You understand the importance of mobilizing. You understand the importance of reaching across the table and say, come with me to do these things that are going to improve the life of this community, that are going to make this campus better, that are going to help our nation restore what I, what I call the future of our democracy. I mean, you are literally the future of our democracy. Michelle and I, you know, we're probably going to be retired in 10 years, and we're going to need people like you to take over. And that's what this is really about. So don't, like that woman, some, somebody who believed in me, believe in others. But also, don't let anyone ever tell you you're not smart. That's the other big thing in psychology. You know, I read all kinds of things all the time. You know, and actually having a mentor, having people that believe in you is essential. But also, understanding that you are as smart as anyone in this room, as anyone in this country. And so many people, I was talking to a lot of researchers at Stanford and Harvard, and one of the things they said was, third graders begin to lose hope in low-income communities, in low-income schools, in schools in poverty areas. Now, you know, how can you lose hope as a third grader? It's because you don't believe in yourself, you're told you're not smart, the system isn't supporting you, you don't have somebody that believes in you, that is helping you understand that you're as smart as anybody else. So I'm just using those examples because, you know, before I get onto my speech, which I'll do, I just <laughs> want to give you some personal advice. And it really is about other people, but it also is internally believing that you can do things that are bigger than you think you can. 
and you can exceed what other people think you can do, and you can exceed what you think is possible for yourself to do. And I hope you take that with you in Mobilize, because I think you've got a great opportunity here to learn from each other, to, be, to form some friendships. You know, a lot of people talk about networking. I'll say it's really true. Getting to know other people and becoming part of a network is going to give you opportunity that you may not realize today. So you can reach across or they can reach across to you and you can probably do something much bigger and much more fun and much more exciting and much more important than you might have done on your own. Um, I know this certain, you know, certainly as you go on in your education, there are certain kinds of times in your life where you do things that are very lonely. It's very lonely to actually prepare for an exam. You can prepare with other people, but, you know, when you walk into that room to take that exam, it is you and that piece of paper and those questions, and you have to do everything you can to do the best you can. But it is that whole network of people and the sharing that are going to give you the impetus to really do great things in your life, and we need you to do those great things. Now, our federal student aid program is so essential to California's future and to the country's future and to Florida's future and every other state um, in our nation because I think it's responsible for being an incentive for what I call educating the top 100% of students in this country who want an opportunity to go to college. So people may say to you, well, not everyone should go to college. Well, that's all fine, but everyone should have an opportunity. And if they choose not to go because it's not the right time, because other things get in the way, that's okay too. So federal student aid is something that our president is going to, he really has drawn a line in the sand. He has really said, uh, you know, in the last three years, what's interesting, we had six million people uh, enrolled in college who received a Pell Grant uh, in 2008. And guess what? Today we have 9.8 million students. So we've gone from 6 million to 9.8 million people, 3.8 million people in less than three years. And that's the kind of change that I think Mobilize is thinking about. You know, how do you really build capacity to do things like that? Well, the good news was Congress, President Obama, they were all on the same page. They may not have agreed on every, every single thing, but Congress passed SAFRA, the Student Aid Reform Bill. They passed the health care reform. They're rethinking now it's a big political quagmire. But frankly, when they did that, they passed that opportunity to say that federal student aid would continue and be available to what I call that top 100%. So kudos to Congress, kudos to the President for figuring out that we could take the Pell Grant and add $900 to it so that today every student uh, who enrolls in the fall who's eligible for a full Pell Grant, full-time student, low income, lowest income in the country, um, would, would maximize what you get in a Pell Grant is $5,635, Michelle, did I get that right? 5000 yeah. And so that will be... Um, that will be the amount of money that will pay for most of a community college education. Um, the other thing we're working on, we talked about books at our table. We have, you know, I, I have this speech that starts with $35, and then it says just $35. I remember that number because it was the lack of $35 that stopped one of my students from continuing his education in the summer. And he was one of those students who was a Latino young man, had a five-year-old kid, had an alcoholic father, lived in his grandmother's house in a tiny little room with his son, um, had no wife. And he was actually couldn't afford a computer, was studying on a friend's computer after the friend had finished studying at a nearby university. So he was really dedicated, and I got to meet him. And he was getting, you know, he had, he had uh, very good grades. And then he disappeared. And I'd call and leave a message. It was over the summer and never called back. And then I ran into him in the community. And I said, Manuel, wh what happened to you? You know, you were doing so well. You passed your classes. Um, you know, we had it all set up for you to finish freshman composition in the summer so you could go on. His dream was to transfer to a university after, after De Anza College. He said, you know, the truth is I couldn't afford the book. And the book was $35. And he said, I wasn't going to make a choice between my son and the book. 
And I said, Manuel, we had an emergency book fund. You didn't even call me. You didn't call, you know, go to, you know, you know even say what you, what you needed. So barriers get in the way of people doing things that they need to do for themselves. And I think with Mobilize, you know, you're looking at how can you make a difference and remove barriers so that people can get their education, can contribute to the community, and become citizens in the community that we want to live with. You know, we've had a lot of time where it's, it's you know, I, I say it, you know, we've created a NIMBY society, not in my backyard. You know, I want to go home, shut my door, watch my TV. You know, I just had uh, Michael Levine, who, who Sesame Street expert. He was one of the founders of Sesame Street, Kermit, you know, all of that. And he was telling me how many hours people are watching television every single day. And no wonder we don't have enough time for civic engagement and these kinds of leadership opportunities because people are in their homes with the door shut. And so, you know, as students, as young people, we need to get those doors open. We need to get people outside. We need to get people meeting each other. We need to get people contributing to community work, whether it's volunteering, whether it's participating, and whether it's helping them think about ways that they can participate in society. Because we have created, I think, a very exclusive society. And what we want to do is transform society to be far more inclusive. So what we're working on at the federal level, you know, as I said, the federal aid program, college affordability is huge for us. We want to keep the 3.4% interest rate for incoming students in the fall. President's been talking about that. President's going to continue to talk about it. Congress has 30 days to decide. It sounds like both sides think it's a good thing, but they're arguing about how to pay for it. Um, you know, you get what you pay for, and what you pay for matters. And so hopefully they will think that students today deserve to have the same interest rate as students had that took federal loans uh, over the last few years. We had this in place for five years. And it was put in place by the Bush administration. It was continued in the Obama administration. It was a bipartisan effort. And I think that's what we want to see politically, that there are certain things that are really good to do for society, the top 100%. That's a great example of how both sides of the aisle can hopefully come together and make a difference. So I want to thank all of you. I've got a, you know, you've got uh, Maya and Sita Smith here. I mean, a great leader in this area for Mobilize. You've got your president. You've got, you know, the Knight Foundation as a support. We've got big problems in this country. We want to ramp up our graduation rate by 50%. We want you getting back to work. We want you getting those jobs. Um, we've got jobs that are unfilled today because we don't have qualified people to get into them. And we know it's a tough time right now. But we think with your help, we can really make a difference and get this country on track. So, you know, my ask of you is be part of our 2020 goal. You're in Target 2020 already. We want you to graduate. Make sure you graduate. That's essential. Um, use all the resources and the networks that you have here and all of the things that um, your proposals are going to be opportunities. Think of, think of the competition. Whoever wins and whoever loses, you're all winners because those are proposals you can probably go and get funded if you can't fund them all here at Mobilize. Those are the kinds of ideas that don't happen in Washington, D.C. Those are the things that you can do as students come up with those ideas. Creativity is what this society is built on. It's what our, what our community was founded on. You know, the founding fathers, how amazing that constitution is. They really thought through how the country should be. And now it's your country and it's our country. And I think together we've got a lot of things to do this, to make this country the great country that it really can be going forward in the future. So I'm thrilled to be here. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be your speaker. We're all at firstname.lastname at ed.gov, um, michelle.brown, martha.canter, and arnie.duncan. You'll get a response. Um, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you're doing. I want to look at the proposals. I want to see who got selected. And um, really want to thank the philanthropies, thank the Knight Foundation and others, the, the Gates Foundation and Lumina, for supporting this kind of work that is going to give you opportunities and skills that you'll use throughout your life. So thank you again.